Terry Froom, and I'm the Chief Allied Health Officer here at the hospital, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to today's announcement. Several staff from the National Office of the Memos Society of Canada have traveled to Winnipeg, including Yves Savoie, uh, President and CEO, as well as Karen Lee, Vice President of Research. Welcome to our city. We are thrilled to be hosting you today. The MS Society Manitoba Division is represented by Keith McConnell, Chair of the Board, as well as Donna Boyd, President of the Manitoba Division. Members of their board and members of the MS Society of Manitoba are here as well today, as are some of their event sponsors. Christina Weiss and staff from Research Manitoba are also joining us today. As well in the room, I see a few members from Health Sciences Centre, our staff team. Welcome to one and all. Canada has one of the highest rates of multiple sclerosis in the world. It is one of the most common neurological diseases affecting young adults in Canada, and the unpredictable effects of MS last for the rest of their lives. While there is currently no cure, each day researchers are learning more about what causes MS and are zeroing in on ways to prevent it. Health Sciences Centre of Manitoba of Winnipeg is Manitoba's tertiary care centre and we are also home to Manitoba MS Clinic where internationally recognized expertise is conducting groundbreaking research. We are extremely proud to be part of one of these partners in this announcement. Very shortly, you'll hear about the promising news affecting Canadian MS and research communities. Our speakers will be telling you about some of the scientific aspects, the specialized facilities that are needed, and what this will mean for Manitobans living with MS. So on behalf of the hospital, once again I'd like to welcome you and now call on Yves Savoie, President of the MS Society of Canada, to the podium. Thank you, Carrie, for your warm welcome to Winnipeg. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this press conference. I'm very pleased today um, to be part of this announcement, which will generate tremendous excitement for all Canadians living and affected by multiple sclerosis. I want to thank Dr. James Merritt, the principal investigator here at the Winnipeg site, Ms. Christina Weiss, the CEO of Research Manitoba, and Ms. Lizelle Mendoza, a person living with MS, who are here with me and who you'll be hearing from in the next few minutes. Quoique j'offrirai mes propos en langue anglaise seulement ce matin, je tiens à signaler ma disponibilité aux représentants des médias francophones pour des entretiens en français suite à la conférence de presse. Je tiens aussi à vous signaler que tous les documents dans la pochette de presse sont également disponibles en langue française. Today, I'm honored to announce Canada's first mesenchymal stem cell clinical trial for MS. The MS Society of Canada and its related multiple Sclerosis Scientific Research Foundation are proud to announce a $4.2 million grant in support of this new exciting research initiative for people living with MS. This clinical trial, which is also known as MESCAMS, is the Canadian arm of an international study investigating the safety and efficacy of mesenchymal stem cell therapy specifically for MS. This international effort pools scientific resources and expertise from nine centers worldwide that are con conducting parallel research. This collaboration will support the development of an international consensus on safe protocols for mesenchymal stem cell treatment. I'm very excited that the Canadian arm of the clinical trial will be led by Dr. Mark Friedman from the Ottawa Hospital Research Institute and the University of Ottawa with Dr. James Marriott here at the University of Manitoba. Both principal investigators for this study have impressive track records in MS research. I'm confident they will continue their trademark work in research that lead, leads to the kinds of definitive answers that people with MS want to have. Collaboration in the research community is essential for creating a better future for people with MS. People with MS live with the unpredictability of the disease and many experience disability, which often worsens over time. With the two clinical trial sites, one here in Winnipeg, in this institution, and the other in Ottawa, we are poised to reveal more about the promise of mesenchymal stem cells to repair our damaged nerve cells in MS. 
Among other things, this research holds great potential for people living with progressive MS. As you know, we have a number of effective treatments for relapsing remitting forms of MS. But treating progressive MS is a mystery that continues to elude us. I'm hopeful that this study can change that. MESCAMs will test the remarkable potential of these stem cells to do two things, to reduce inflammation and to promote the repair of damaged nerve tissue. This study, therefore, has relevance both for people living with relapsing remitting MS and for those with progressive forms of MS, both primary and secondary. This is why I'm really excited to be here and hopeful that MESCAMs will open new avenues for treatments of MS. In all the research that the MS Society invests in, it is critical that we drive science forward boldly, with the highest ethical standards, um, and with speed. Our research programs bring funding to the best research according to international standards of scientific excellence. Granting decisions, like with Research Manitoba, are made based on robust, open competitions and rigorous independent review. The independent review panel that was convened to examine the merit of this proposal was international in its makeup. All research of this kind, and particularly all research involving human subjects funded by the society, must also receive the appropriate regulatory approvals, and in the case of use of stem cells, this involves Health Canada, and the Research Ethics Review Board at each of the participating institutions in each of the sites. And in keeping with ethical standards for studies involving humans, participants in the trial will not have to pay to enroll. These are the hallmarks of our research programs, ensuring that we fund the best research to unlock the definitive answers people with MS want and deserve. Canada, in fact, has the highest rate of MS in the world, probably linked at least in part to the lack of intense sun rays during the winter months. However, we're fortunate that Canadian researchers are among the best in the world in developing safe and effective treatments for all forms of this often very unpredictable and disabling disease. I want to acknowledge that um, research of this kind, clinical trials, relies on a spirit of collaboration not among researchers and funders, but also with those who are going to take part in the research. They are also pioneers in pursuing the research breakthroughs. And I uh, want to signal my own deep appreciation for the 40 Canadians who will be subjects in this study. I know that uh, the possibility of participating in the study is already generating tremendous excitement and your partnership in our research is actually really absolutely fundamental. So to those of you who will have the privilege of being pioneers, thank you. I also want to acknowledge the very important partnership with our funders who've been critical in moving this kind of research forward. You'll hear from Christina in a moment, but I do want to reflect my deep gratitude for the generous commitment of Research Manitoba, an agency of the government of, Ten of Manitoba, which has committed $1.5 million to MESCAMS. The government of Manitoba has a strong desire to serve Manitobans living with MS, and this commitment to bold, new, promising scientific research uh, is just an example of that. I also want to thank ANW, ANW Food Services of Canada, for their $1 million contribution to this clinical tri trial. ANW, as many of you know, has been a tremendous partner of the society over the past six years, and this $1 million brings their total contribution over six years to $7.5 million. This million dollars obviously just helps to underscore ANW's tremendous commitment to Canadians living with MS. Finally, I do want to acknowledge that for many people with living, living with MS, often feels that research is not moving fast enough. Um, we're fortunate that a number of MS treatment options are available, but they're available to Canadians living with relapsing remitting MS. 
And in our search for these answers, we want to balance doing things well and doing things fast. And we continue to push for treatments that specifically tackle progressive forms of MS. Today's MESCAM's announcement underscore, underscores the kind of real hope that MS research can bring to those affected by multiple sclerosis. I know personally many people with MS, and I count many of them as good friends. And I personally share your hope for success in this very ambitious and groundbreaking initiative. The MS Society of Canada is proud to work alongside those of you who have MS and are touched by MS, and I thank you for being partners in our vision to create a world one day that will be free of MS. At this time, it's my pleasure to reintroduce to you Dr. James Merritt, who is the principal co-investigator of the study and the principal investigator at the Winnipeg site. James. So, uh, so thank you for that very kind introduction there. I'm, an, I'm a neurologist specializing in MS and I do the clinical trial program here at the University of Manitoba and at the Health Sciences Center. I'm speaking today not just for myself, on behalf of the Cellular Therapy and Regenerative Program led by Drs. Donna Wall and David Schweitzer and also for the MS clinical team led by Dr. Ruth Ann Mary. On behalf of them and the entire laboratory and clinical staff in the MS clinic and the MS research clinic and cell therapy programs, here at the Health Sciences Centre, I'd like to once again extend our thanks to Multiple Sclerosis Society of Canada, Multiple Sclerosis Scientific Research Foundation, Research Manitoba, and to a &W Food Services Canada for their generous support which makes this study here today possible. This support has allowed the construction of a world-class cell production laboratory right here in Winnipeg at the Health Sciences Centre. This laboratory enables us not only to undertake this clinical trial, but uh, for mesenchymal stem cells in MS, but also develop a platform that we can use for further patient-focused clinical research here in Winnipeg. Just to begin by briefly overviewing what this trial is all about, mesenchymal stem cells are found throughout the body, in the bone marrow, the skin, and the fat. Studies in animals and in a small number of people with MS and with other conditions, both neurological and non-neurological, have shown that these cells can potentially reduce the harmful inflammation which is at the heart of MS and possibly also allow repair of nerve tissue, suggesting that be helpful in treating all forms of MS and potentially uh, broaden our scope as you spoke about, not just to those with relapsing remitting MS. The Canadian Men's Cam study that we're announcing today will enroll 40 patients in Canada, 20 in Ottawa and 20 here in Winnipeg. Each participant who enters the trial will first have a small sample of bone marrow extracted under local anesthetic from the hip. Then, in this newly formed cell therapy laboratory here, the mesenchyme cells, stem cells will be purified from the bone marrow, multiplied many, many times over in the lab. During the trial, each participant will then receive an intravenous or through the vein reinfusion of their own stem cells and will be followed in the clinic for a or for one year. Over that time, we'll see how each participating in the trial feels after their, after their treatment, and we will study how they do on their medical neurological exams. We will do blood tests that enable us to see what these stem cells, what effect these stem cells have on the immune system, and we will also uh, have MRI examinations which will allow us to see what's going on within the nervous system itself. It is very exciting to be able to offer this mesenchymal trail to Manitobans affected by MS. Along with Dr. Mark Freeman's team in Ottawa, as Yiva said, Manitoba will be partnering with MS research groups globally performing similar clinical trials. This will allow us to create a much larger international trial which can then more effectively determine the role of mesenchymal stem cells in those with MS. By joining together and pooling data with our international colleagues, we'll be able to answer more questions about these cells, how they work in people with MS, and we'll be get, it, get those answers much faster. Cell-based therapies like this hold immense promise and are eagerly awaited by MS researchers and clinicians like myself, but most importantly, by those who are affected by MS. Studying the potential for mesenchymal stem cells to reduce injury and also possibly to promote repair in persons with MS is an extraordinarily important objective. 
and we are thrilled that Manitoba and the Health Sciences Centre is at the global forefront of this research and treatment effort. I'd just like to uh, next introduce Ms. Christina Weiss, Chief Executive Officer of Research in Manitoba, who has been instrumental in supporting the construction of the Health Sciences Centre Cell Therapy Production Laboratory, which will enable us to do this uh, very important trial of mesenchymal stem cells and offer it to Manitobans with MS. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Marriott. I am thrilled to be here at the Health Science Center today to be part of this announcement. <laughs> yeah, sorry, a lot shorter than everyone else, thanks. Um, as was already noted, Research Manitoba is a provincial agency created to promote and support research in health, natural sciences, social sciences, engineering, and humanities. It is very important to our organization to cultivate partnerships which lead to research that has an impact on the lives of Manitobans. And I am so proud of the partnerships Research Manitoba fosters. But today, I am especially honored to be here with the MS Society and a and Food Services of Canada. This new partnership allows Research Manitoba to support exciting national and international research that can potentially impact the lives of so many living with MS here in Manitoba and around the world. The funding announcement today supports a group of highly dedicated clinician scientists, and you've already heard from Dr. Marriott, and researchers in Manitoba. These researchers are among the most productive and exhibit paramount potential to make their mark on the global research arena, and we are so privileged to be a part of this opportunity. I would like to congratulate each of the researchers, and they're all here. You bring unique strength and perspective to this initiative, and your work will touch many lives. I'd like to thank all of the funders for their generous contributions to this clinical trial. It wouldn't be possible without the partnerships and the cooperation. And in particular, I would like to thank Karen, um, Karen Lee and Yves Savoie, without whom this partnership would not be possible. It has been a pleasure working with you, and I hope that this partnership continues. I want to thank the MS Society for coordinating this event today and the Health Sciences Centre for, for hosting us. And now I'd like to introduce you to Ms. Lizelle Mendoza. Um, Ms. Mendoza is from the Winnipeg area, and she lives with MS. She's here today to share a few words with us. Please join us in welcoming. Thank you. Imagine waking up one day with a large white spot in your eye. For many, living with MS, this is a familiar experience. For me, it happened only when I was 11 years old. For many years, I had no idea what was wrong with me. I had blurry vision that stopped me from playing sports and prevented me from trying new things. Because I knew my vision would blur, I just didn't know when. Over a few months, my symptoms eventually progressed to complete blindness, except to my peripherals, along with the numbness in my legs. I had a relapse in, of the same symptoms every two years. Finally, when I turned 18, my doctors had a diagnosis, relapsing, remitting MS. The moment someone said that, you have MS, I thought my life was over. I was 18. This was supposed to be the time when you really start to live, but for me, it felt like the end. I am a Winnipegger, and my parents immigrated from the Philippines. MS is not very common in the Asian culture, and my family had a large learning curve as we came to understand what the disease meant for us. At first, I had felt tied down. Everyone, myself included, said, you can't do this, you shouldn't do that. But as I matured, I learned more about the treatment options and decided to take disease-modifying therapies, which has helped to control my symptoms and take control of my life again. Due to the relapsing, remitting cycle, of MS, I can actually forget sometimes that I have this disease. There are moments when I've overextended myself and my eyes will blur and my body is telling me to slow down. So I do, and then I get right back up again. I'm in my final year of nursing, and yes, it is a career choice directly related to living with multiple sclerosis. I've been in the hospital more times than I can count, 
and the fantastic care I've received from my nurses has inspired me to join them. I know that the life I'm living right now wouldn't be possible without the therapies I'm taking. When I learned about the clinical trials for stem cell research, I was overjoyed and filled with such hope. I've been doing the Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries MS swap for seven years, raising money to support research just like this. For me, the stem cell, the stem cell research represents a step towards a cure for MS. And not just a little step, this is a big important step on the path to end MS. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lizelle, for sharing your story. It really means a lot to have you here today, so thank you. And thank you again to our, our other speakers as well. And we will be opening the floor up um, for uh, some questions pertaining to today's announcement for about 10 minutes. Following that, um, our speakers and some other uh, others will be available for one-on-one -on -one interviews if anyone is interested as well. So I'd like to ask um, speakers to join us again at the podium together. Does anyone have any questions that they'd like to bring forward at this time? Yes. So the question is, can um, any of the speakers talk about the criteria to participate in the study? James? So um, uh, in the interest of time, I, I won't go through a huge run through of, of everything, but uh, potentially all patients with MS would be open, uh, potentially able to participate, provided there was some evidence either on MRI scan or in terms of what had happened to them recently with their MS that would uh, suggest some active inflammation. So all uh, patients with MS could conceivably be, be trial candidates, um, provided that they're uh, adults. Any others? So the question is, at the following um, this study, so at the end of this study, do you see any, um, do you foresee any further studies in the same area, James? Uh, so uh, yes, is the is, is the short answer certainly. What we hope to this, the the primary goal of this study is to make sure this treatment option is safe and to get some initial signals as to how effective it is. Uh, as with most clinical trials involving a relatively small number of people, in this case about 160, will likely need to do a much larger trial afterwards to get more definitive answers. Uh, and this trial as well will also allow us, uh, both locally and with our collaboratives uh, across Canada and worldwide, to perhaps design better trials down the road and tweak things as needed. Thank you. Any other questions? Again, our spokespeople will be available, and um, unfortunately, Dr. Mark Fruden was not able to join today for this press conference, but he is available by telephone, so please do um, let me know if you would like me to put you in touch directly with his team. Um, sure. Sure, thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us today. We appreciate uh, you being here.